beautiful students today we are starting another new chapter that is environmental biotechnology what is environmental biotechnology technology that itself means that some technology is uh, applying here for what the technology is applying for um, addressing which problem we are using the technology okay that we are going to see here um, what is environmental biotechnology that means we are using biotechnological principles for what to solve problems in natural agricultural and man-made environment whatever problems that are occurring in natural environment agricultural environment or man-made environment those problems we are solving using biotechnological principles that process is called that method is called environmental biotechnology uh, where all its applications in all which fields we are applying this environmental biotechnology what is the use of environmental biotechnology yes we are uh, using this environmental biotechnology in many fields like uh, bioremediation waste management bio leaching for developing bio pesticides bio fertilizers so many applications are here so, and then what is the importance of uh, microbes in, uh, in using this uh, biotechnology what is the uh, importance of microbes means that uh, the microbes are actually biggest sources of novel genes novel genes means new type of genes these microbes are always uh, repositories of new and new type of different different type of genes so that's a very good uh, source or uh, uh, organisms that we can use to generate some bio pesticides or bio uh, fertilizers or bio monitoring agents so that's the importance of microbes then what is metagenomics and this can be asked as a, a one more question also metagenomics what is then metagenomics it is the process of analysis of genome genome of entire microbe community uh, how many microbes are available how many microbes we know we are studying the genome of all those microbes that analysis is called metagenomics then what is the difference between metagenomics and genomics? Genomics means it is focusing only or, or uh, focusing or studying only one genomes or one organism's genome. But metagenomics in this process here considering uh, multiple organisms genome of multiple organisms is studying considering in metagenomics. In, geno in a genomics, sim a simple genomics, only one organism's genome is considered. Okay, next step. Biotechnological methods of pollution detection. Um, then several criteria are there for biomonitoring of pollution. Um, uh, so, uh, which all agents, which all organisms we are considering to understand the pollution status of a place, uh, we need to consider before uh, selecting a plant or a microorganisms, uh, we need to assess certain, we need to check certain criteria. Which are the criteria? Visual rating. Visual rating for visual rating, uh, which parameters we need to consider? The main parameter is growth rate and productivity. For example, if we want to understand the effect of a pollutant, so uh, that pollutant's effect, we are understanding how, because uh, we are assaying or we are uh, uh, inspecting the growth rate or the productivity with respect to a plant or maybe some uh, uh, microbes by understanding or uh, continuously checking what change is happening to its growth rate uh, or with respect to its productivity we can understand the effect of that pollutant so in visual rating so uh, all these these parameters we can uh, understand uh, visually 
that growth rate and productivity. So, um, that is visual aid. In the case of microorganisms, uh, we are using turbidometric analysis to understand uh, the change in growth rate and productivity. But in the case of plants, uh, we can uh, understand that change happens in growth and uh, productivity um, by visually, visually checking uh, the damage that happens to leaves, it's a seed viability, that changes happens to its seed viability, uh, germination, change happens to its germination. Or by understanding all those things, we can understand the effect of that particular pollutant. And if we are considering uh, the case of fishes, then we are... Uh, uh, understand the effect of that pollutant by uh, checking its LD50 value. LD50 value, I already explained to you that it is that amount of a pollutant that is uh, capable to kill uh, half the population of considered organism. Uh, so, LD50 value of fish means if we are considering a pollutant, how much pollutant is required? to kill the half population of the considered uh, fish population that is only 50 value uh, so this is about the visual rating all these things we can understand uh, by visually itself the changes happen if that particular pollutant is present genotoxicity rating genotoxicity rating means we are uh, understanding what deleterious action is happening on cells genetic material because of a certain pollutant that is genetic genotoxicity um, rating and how we are executing how we are detecting that or how we are understanding that change um, by understanding the extent of damage caused to an organism by that particular by understanding that, the extent of damage, we are understanding the level of pollution. Um, so, and also we are understanding that extent with respect to cellular aspects and the subcellular levels. Uh, so, um, we are considering what change happened with respect to cellular organis organelles like uh, membranes, mitochondria, uh, what change happened to the uh, cell's genomes, what happened to cell's immune system, biomolecules. By understanding all these changes, what extent, how much extent the damage is causing, we can understand the level of pollution. Uh, then cytotoxic test. Cytotoxic test means, uh, test used to understand the measurement of chromosomal damage. Chromosomal damage means including and the breakage in chromosomes, sister chromos uh, chromatic exchange, all these are we are understanding or assessing or checking. Um, by checking that, uh, that we can understand uh, the, uh, uh, if pollution is present in a particular area or not. And also uh, that um, disease causing, presence of disease causing organisms in water, how we are detecting? For detecting that disease, occurrence of disease causing organism, we are using DNA props. Uh, we are adding a specified DNA fragment having a particular sequence. Uh, and also that sequence will be complementary to uh, a part of the genome of that particular uh, organism that is causing a disease. So, if we introduce that DNA probe to the considered medium, that DNA probe, if that particular pollutant, pollution causing or, or that disease, causing, not pollution, if that uh, particular or microorganism that is causing disease is present in that medium, that DNA probe can go and bind to that microorganisms genome and we can understand that that a particular uh, disease causing organism is present in that medium that is the application then metabolic rate metabolic that uh, metabolism that is considered here metabolic rate uh, 
we are, in this method uh, we are understanding or um, try to check what change is happening ha or happen with respect to metabolic process in selected organisms by assaying or uh, understanding that change we uh, de detect the presence of pollution or the extent of pollution that is metabolic quality um, and uh, Biomarkers also there. Biomarkers means um, they are used to assess the pollution stress. Um, the, the biomarkers using metabolic rating, usual biomarkers we are commonly using are chlorophyll, proteins, nucleic acids and uh, also cha uh, changes in the enzyme act activities in the organisms. All these things we are considering uh, to use as biomarkers. Any change happen to all these things activities. If any change happen to normal functioning of chlorophyll, if any change happens to the protein functioning, nucleic acid functioning, then we understand that uh, that uh, pollution is there or this much pollution is there. Then bio assay using whole organisms. Sometimes we are uh, taking uh, the whole organisms or considering the whole organisms to understand the level of pollution. Now uh, here all these things we are uh, considering only a part or part of organelle or a particular aspect. Uh, here we are considering the whole organisms for de determining the pollution status. For uh, considering and a, a organ, organism uh, to detect pollution level that organism need to satisfy certain criteria certain um, features that features uh, in group it should be sensitive to that particular pollutant that we are considering if that organism is not sensitive to that pollut pollutant then there is no use of selecting that organism as say uh, monitoring uh, organism to detect that poll pollutant and also it should be a point of occurrence uh, it should be easily available it is uh, very much rare that we can use that organism uh, we can't consider them. and also it should be available around the year mm -hmm. if a particular organism we are considering for uh, uh, to assay the uh, pollution uh, is available only a particular period of time and uh, then we can't use we can't consider that organism uh, instead it should be available around throughout the year and also it should be simple uh, reproducible and also it should be cost effective uh, if all these uh, criteria or features are satisfying then only we are considering an organism uh, to detect or determine the level or the presence of pollution or polluter. Next, algae using bioassay, which all algae we are commonly using, chlorella, mycocystis, spirulina are usually using uh, in um, this uh, bio uh, environmental monitoring. Bioassay. Bio then, bacterial bioassay. What is the purpose? Yeah, to detect the fecal pollution. If fecal pollution is there in water, we are using bacterial assay. And uh, for uh, testing or understanding the level, how much bacteria or, or microorganism is present in a uh, definite quantity of water, we are uh, using certain tests. Coliform test is there, uh, uh, test is there and also AIMS test also there. AIMS test simply means it is a test to determine mutagenic activity of chemicals. Mutagenic activity of chemicals means if a particular chemical is present in that medium, it may cause mutation in the considered microorganisms. Uh, on seeing or, or determining the number of mutant strain against the normal strain, we can understand the uh, drastic effect of or, or the uh, harmful effect of a particular considered pollutant that is AIMS test. Um, bacterial bioluminescence. 
means certain bacteria can produce bioluminescence if certain gaseous pollutants are present. Such bacteria are called Photobacterium phosphorium. Lichens. The lichens that is usually used in bio are um, they, they are commonly using I mean, like it's um, uh, widely using in bioassay. Then mosses. Mosses are usually using uh, for uh, detecting metal pollution. Uh, examples for mosses uh, that are using in um, bioassay are stereophyllum, dryness, etc. Then vascular macrophytes. Vascular macrophytes using in uh, bioassay are water hyacinths, which is given here. Lemna mina mina and, uh, to detect the aquatic metal pollution. Then animals also using uh, for understanding the um, biopollution. Uh, they include animals, certain fishes, certain bombs are also uh, considered for bioassay. Then coming to cytogenetic bioassay. Cytogenetic bioassay means uh, it detects mutagens. Mutagens means anything can cause mutation. And carcinogens can cause that cause cancer. By how we are understanding the presence of such uh, things, understanding the changes happened in cellular components. The cellular components like it. Nucleus or chromosomes. Next. Bioassay using molecular props and immunoassays. Molecular props application where it is using to de detect disease causing bacteria and virus. Where disease causing bacteria and virus are present in a medium, we are using molecular props for identifying that. Then immunoassays application where we are using immunoassay uh, to identify pathogens, persons of pathogens that exhibit immunological property. If a certain strain of bacteria they if they develop um, that uh, uh, immune immunity against a drug, then that bacteria are uh, immune immunized bacteria. To detect the presence of such a strain, we are using immunoassay. Then biosensors. Biosensors means a, a, is a type of analytical device. What's the peculiarity? In that in, uh, a device, we are fixing certain biological material immobilized. It can't move. That biological material may be of enzyme, any type of organ or cell. And uh, then we need to understand whether uh, what's the what is the concentration of particular new chemical in a sample. So we are introducing that uh, chemical and uh, permitting this immobilized biological material to interact with us. After interacting, this device will produce certain physical, chemical, or electrical signal in that uh, in the form of some readings or uh, values or like. By noting that value, we can understand what's the extent of um, or what is the level of that chemical in a, that in that particular sample. That is biosensors. Uh, for example, is that BOD biosensors are available? Usually, if normally um, uh, we are conducting the BOD test, we need five days to understand, to know the value. But if we are at, uh, using this BOD sensor, within 15 minutes, we will get the value. Next, mm, BOD biosensor. Biological methods in pollution abatement. Which are the biological methods? Sewage treatment using bacteria is a biological method. We are treating, uh, we are um, breaking down the sewage using bacteria. How? Considering a pond, in that pond some algas will be there. And this algae produce oxygen because of photosynthesis. And in this pond so many microbes, bacteria are present. They consume, use this oxygen to decompose the sewage 
present in that form. This is the sewage treatment using bacteria. Next, bio scavengers. Scavenger means some agents that remove unwanted substances. So, bio scavengers, scavengers of metals. So, dealing with this two terms, we need to understand this already discussed the terms bioaccumulation and biomagnification. Bioaccumulation means as time passes, the amount of chemical or polluted in the body of organism increases. That is bioaccumulation. Biomagnification means the amount of a particular pollutant uh, that its amount increases as we go high in uh, high in trophic level in a food chain. That is biomagnification. Um, both are harmful with respect to pollutant. So it is very essential to remove the particular pollutant from the environment. For removing the uh, pollutant, we are using bio scavengers okay scavengers means those organisms who are considered a, a living form they can remove this pollution causing metals from the environment for this we are using phytoplanktons um, are also and also benthic plants like water hyacinth water lettuce ferns are also using and then an algae, chlorella vulgaris, it can uh, take up copper, mercury and uranium from the environment. Then microorganism like E. coli, E. coli can take up mercury from the environment. Uh, then uh, bacillus circulans, another microorganism, it can um, uh, take up copper from the environment. These are all bio scavengers. Control of eutrophication. Eutrophication means nutritional enrichment of water body. Nutritional en enrichment uh, means it promotes more more algal growth. In that way, uh, it, uh, it didn't reduce the availability of oxygen to organisms, including all fishes that residing below the um, water surface. And in that way, they uh, die and decay. And accumulate uh, and as years time pass by that that water system totally may uh, vanish degrade it's uh, eutrophication we know that a result of eutrophication also we know and the total um, what total disappearance of the water medium and as a result of uh, eutrophication um, all the organisms that person in that water medium also can be sweep away. Then how we can prevent the eutrophication? Chemical methods also there, biological methods. Chemical methods means we are applying certain chemicals or algae says for controlling the very fast growth of this algae. It is causing the eutrophication because as they grow, this, this algae grow very fast they consume all the available oxygen and limit the oxygen supply to uh, bottom uh, species. So we need to uh, uh, damage or control that algae for that by using certain chemicals that is chemical mothers. Then what about biological mothers? Biological mothers means uh, certain organisms like uh, cyanophages. Cyanophages means uh, uh, the, they are viruses. Uh, that can kill the algal cells, cyanophages. We are using certain cyanophages uh, to kill the algal population. In that way, we can control eutrophication. Then, immobilized cells in sewage treatment. Immobilized cells in sewage treatment means uh, we are uh, fixing certain cells as immobilized on certain surface. And uh, using this immobilized cells, we are uh, treating the sewage. The examples for uh, um, that immobilized cells that we are using on uh, surface include Pseudomonas putida, Tetrococcus, uh, Elnovi are all used, uh, especially for removing phenol. For removing phenol, we are using this microorganism. We are fixing this micro microorganisms immobilized on certain surface. Arthrobacter. Is another species is used to uh, remove uh, triethyl lead, cop 
copper again copper also we can remove uh, using rhizopus uh, areses areses rhizopus areses and these are all examples for the cells that we are using on certain surfaces to remove uh, the uh, pollutants from the environment then bio remediation bio remediation what is this is a process of using deep Composing these compounds with the help of the enzymes they have or some proteins they have. So that is the way. Um, then for cleaning oil spills, for cleaning oil spills, the common microorganisms that we are using are Pseudomonas, Flavobacterium, Arthrobacter, and Aceto. Back. Uh, one of such major uh, first oil spill happenings Exxon Valdez oil spillage. So first oil spillage because the oil spillage happens first. And uh, in that spillage, uh, that time we use this bioremediation to clean up. And uh, regarding the capacity, capability of bioremediation, we are considering um, or taking the case of Rhodococcus, an example of microorganism. Uh, it has different pathways for de uh, degrading pollutants. This, several strains of Rhodococcus uh, can survive in almost all solvents like ethanol, butanol, dodecane, and toluene. Uh, other way, um, when comparing with other microorganisms, it only can survive all these media. Other most of the other microorganism may um, um, uh, cannot exist. Microorganisms cannot exist in such mediums. At the same time, Rhodococcus can exist in all these mediums. This is case capacity. And uh, next is a, a, about a, a super bug. It's created by Ananda Chakravarti, who invented a genetically engineered pseudomonas putida. Uh, it, it can damage, it can degrade so many pollutants at the same time. Uh, regarding the risk construction, how it is generated, uh, regarding all those things we will learn um, later in this section itself. Now we are going to see biotechnology and biodegradation. Biodegradation, what is biodegradation? Biodegradation means is a phenomena of biological transformation of complex organic compounds by living organisms especially microorganisms so these microorganisms they are are transforming complex organisms to simple that means they are breaking up it's biodegradation uh, then what is xenobiotics Xeno, xenobiotics is a is a collection of certain chemicals they are all unnatural all are synthetic. Such a collection of chemical, uh, they are collectively known as xenobiotics. Uh, they, uh, they include pesticides, herbicides, weedicides, uh, refrigerants, etc. Uh, uh, then, which are the microorganisms that can degrade this xenobiotics? Examples. Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas is a genus of bacteria. It can degrade wide variety of xenobiotics. Uh, then uh, example for jointly acting pseudomonas means uh, yeah, this insecticide parathion is a xenobiotics. It is degraded by a combined joint action of pseudomonas Arginosa and Pseudomonas stelseri. stelseri. These two microorganisms jointly work jointly to degrade the insecticide para It's about biodegradation.
factors affecting the biodegradation. Which are the factors that affect biodegradation? Uh, several factors are there. Uh, like uh, the available capability of that uh, integral microorganisms. Uh, nutrient and oxygen supply for that microorganism. Uh, the ambient temperature, pH. All those things should uh, be uh, in, uh, should be supporting for this biodegradation. Then what is biostimulation and bioaugmentation? Biostimulation means we are stimulating the microorganism to degrade the pollutant. Uh, how we are stimulating? Uh, by introducing the some certain nutrients, oxidants or electron donors to that medium to stimulate the microorganism to degrade that particular pollutant. That is biostimulation. For biostimulation, which are things we are usually giving certain nutrients, certain oxidants or electron donors. That is what is bio-augmentation. Uh, bio-augmentation means to that polluted site, we are introducing microorganism along with its energy source. Uh, that is bio-augmentation. It is a novel approach. And it is adding specific microorganism plus their energy source to the contamination site for degrading that contaminant. Then moving to genetically engineered microbes in biotreatment of waste. Where is this biodegrading genes usually located? Usually it is located in plasmids. Plasmids, what is plasmids? Plasmids are extra chromosomal DNA of microorganisms. What is the significance of this location? Um, if uh, the genes are biodegrading genes as it is located in plasmids, it's very significant. What's the significance? Because if Two plasmids means uh, two microorganisms are there and uh, their two plasmids are homologous. Then there is chance for having recombination. They can recombine and can give rise to a new strain that is capable to degrade uh, two pollutant by a single microorganism. That's the one significance. Only plasmids can recombine each other. That's the significance of having such degrading genes in plasmids. Uh, principal method in developing uh, uh, gem. Gem means genetically modified microorganisms. Uh, it is adopted in the development of a superbug uh, developed by Mohan Chakravarti. We are going to see the mother. First, uh, he take a microorganism. Microorganism means a bacterial strain which is capable to degrade camphor. Which are, are capable to degrade camphor and uh, then let it to me with another bacterial strain which is capable to degrade octane. And in this case, the plasmids, considering plasmids only, these plasmids are incompatible. Incompatible means they can't uh, occur as separate plasmids in a single bacterial strain. Understand? Because they cannot exist as such together in a single strain. So what is possible? They need to recombine. These two plasmids need to recombine. And form a new strain with the one uh, recombined plasmid. This strain is capable to degrade both the camphor and octane. Then he take another bacterial strain capable to degrade sili. And uh, uh, one more bacterial strain capable to degrade naphthali. And in this case, these two plasmids are compatible. So, they can coexist together in the same strain. So, after mating, a new strain is formed with a Cylon degrading plasmid and naphthalene degrading plasmid. Then, in the next step, Chakrabarti made these two together and generate the superbug with uh, plasmids that are capable of degrading Four pollutant, cam camphor, octane, xylene and naphthalene. That is the 
process in developing super but super bug is developed by and chakravarti it's very important so many times and there's more chance to us for your coming examination also so learn it well that is about the super bug with this we finish today's section and class thank you